Hey guys, it's May May, and it is time for Christmas in July. I'm so excited, and I've been wanting to make this. This came in a couple weeks ago, and I haven't got a chance to do it because I was saving it for Christmas in July. So I'm going to be using this mason jar album die and the Merry and Bright um, from Mente, which is so pretty. This is last year's paper, but we do have some available, so that's what I'm going to use. All right, we're going to get started by cutting out our pages, and I'm going to cut my pages with this guy. This is the main page that cuts the jar shape. So I'm gonna be cutting that, so I need to pick out a cover and multiple pages. So let me do that. Now, because I'm using Mente, I'm gonna show you this. This page, I'm gonna pay attention to, okay? I'm gonna look at it. I'm gonna make sure I get where I want it to go and cut this Christmas tree, okay? But on the other pages, I'm just gonna mystery cut them and see what we get, because I think it'll work. If you've never done mystery cut before, that means I'm just gonna cut it where it lands and see what I get. So, I'm gonna get this one ready and then just cut these out. So this is a big die, and it is like literally the size of my cutting plate. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to tape this guy down to cut my mystery sheets. Then I'll tape it down to my actual one um, to cut the rest. And here's what's interesting. I know you're like, well, you're going to cut through the tape. I am, but I wanted to show you something I think is cool. I did this earlier, and when I cut through the tape, it still will hold it on, and it makes doing my paper super easy. So I'm going to bring my um, die cut machine over, open this up, and show you what I'm talking about. So I got that there. So as long as I cover that with my paper, and I'm going to use another piece of tape to hold that in place just a little piece here. As long as I do that, I'll be fine. Then I'm gonna line my top plate up, place it inside here, make sure I'm covering the whole thing. Cause like I said, this is a big die and run it through. Okay, so for my cover piece, I wanna do the little shaker that they have. So you can see how I have the extra die here. This is the little cutout for the middle. So I'm using the same one I use for pages and then I'm gonna do this little cutout piece and I've just taped it all down and I'm gonna pick what I want. Now I gotta caution you something because I messed up earlier, okay? When you're cutting this, pay attention. If I want this to be the front, if I want this to be my album cover, I need to cut it down because this is where, that's the way it lays, okay? So pay attention to your orientation. I'm not worried about the back because I'll be happy with what I get. It'll be kind of mystery-like, so it will be fine. So let's put this down here like so. I'm going to add this little guy on top and I'm going to run this through. I went ahead and cut out some other dies that I wanted. I want this little label piece. I think it's super cute. And I cut out a couple of Christmas trees. So now we can start putting this guy together. Oh, I also cut out, I wanted to try it and see if it would work. This is the thin um, chipboard we have that's by Graphic 45. My tape is still on there. But I wanna show you, it warped a little bit, but I think I'm gonna be okay by the time I glue this down and glue it all together. I think that will um, work its way out. I'm going to try it as my cover background, and we'll see what happens. So, that's one of those things. Let me try it to see. And I'm real tempted to actually just use the craft as my cover. I don't know. But look how cute this is with just the just the craft showing. I don't know. Maybe. Possibly. We'll see. All right. Let me plan out this cover. Now, I think you can see what I did there. I just added some adhesive around and then stuck this piece on. You can totally cut this out with your um, die cut. I just didn't because I'd already put my machine up. So I'm just gonna run around and fussy cut the edge. But if you don't wanna do all this little part, just use your die. Just cut another one out of your acetate. By the way, a lot of people ask me what this acetate is that I use. We carry some plastic sheets in the store, but this one is overhead transparency for like, um, from like what teachers use. 
and I really like it. I had a box that my aunt gave me years ago, and I am not even close to getting through it. Not even close. So I just reach in there and grab a piece, and that's what I use. So I'm going to trim this out, and then we'll keep going. Now, to make this a shaker element, I need to add foam tape to the back because when you're making a shaker element, here's what matters, okay? You have your bottom piece of bread, then you have your top piece of bread for your sandwich, and then you just put whatever you want in here to be your shaker part, but you have to lift these up from each other so they'll shake. Shaker cards intimidate people, but they're really not that difficult. What I wanna do now is just cut myself some foam, and here's the trick. Depending on what you're putting inside, now I plan to put some pretty chunky stuff inside. I don't really want to use a fine glitter, but that's because I don't like fine glitter, so I don't really have a lot in my collection. But if you use something chunky, you don't have to be quite as picky about closing in every single little gap. But if you use something thin or a fine glitter, you want to make sure you leave no gaps in your foam tape. So you see how I'm adding this foam? And up here you can go straight across as long as you don't have to work around that little edge. Now down here we do. I'll show you a tip in a minute for doing that. Let me get this other side on. So a little tip I learned from this great place called YouTube is to do this. I've got my foam tape here. I've, re I've released the, um, well it doesn't have a backer on the back. I've just pulled it off of the foam roll and now I'm going to release the backer off the front and this will allow us to be able to roll this around our curved edge. So watch what'll happen. I'll start in one corner, just like so. And because I don't have that little backer piece on, I can literally roll this right along the edge here because it's much more malleable without that piece that makes it super stiff. So you just wanna make sure it doesn't show on the front side. And we did well there. And I want to cut this right here because they're overlapping too much. I want that to lay in there nice and flat. I think that's got it. It may not have. I may have to do a little more trim on that. But that's one layer. Now, for me, I like for my stuff to pop up a little higher. So I'm going to actually add one more layer of the foam doing it just like I did this one. So that took a little work and some patience, but it's ready. This side is got the sticky exposed. I'm not quite ready to put it in yet because I want to do something else. I'll show you. So in this set comes this little die that's all these little snowflakes, and I think it's so cute, and I think they'd be cute kind of sprinkled in here because I don't want this to be super plain up here, but I think they'll be pretty kind of dropping down. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to add some snowflakes. So I want to add something else. I think this little train will be so cute. I'm going to see. I'm going to cut this little guy out and see how he'll look in our scene. And I might layer several things up. I don't know. Just gonna see what he does. So I fussy cut the train out and then I put it in and I just feel like it's a little too matte finish to work. But look, this little Santa is super cute. You see that little guy? And he's kind of a shiny ornament so he looks a little better in the scene. Let me see if I wanna add anything else. Okay, so I've picked out a couple things. I'm not sure I love it, but we'll see. I'm gonna be adding so much to this album that I think by the time it's over with, I will probably love it. So I'm gonna be adding this little Santa down here toward the bottom, like so. Just stick him right there. I'm gonna press him in so he sticks nice and tight. And then I'm gonna add this little snowman down here too. And the reason I'm going kind of low, a couple things, I'm gonna cover up the kind of the bases of these trees. And another thing is I wanna add that little band that comes in the kit are in the die set to the middle. So I don't want these to get covered up. So I'm just thinking somewhere down here. And I know that they don't work proportionately. Like I know that Santa is small compared to this snowman, but I think it is still cute. I think it is still a cute idea. Okay, now we can add our snow and we can add our piece. All right, let me get that all together. So I have these pieces from Nuvo that are Diamond Harlequin. I think they're so pretty and I love the sheen that they have. I'm going to load this guy up. I want a lot of these in here and I'm gonna put them kind of low because I want them to live kind of low. I really want a lot of these, y'all. I'm not even joking. I want to see how many that will do. Now I'm putting them here and then I'm gonna put this piece on here, right? To hold it down. I see another spot where I need to add a little foam up here. So let me do that. Okay, I've got all of the backer revealed here and we are gonna stick this down. I'm gonna start at the bottom. Lining this up may prove tricky, I don't know, maybe not. It doesn't, doesn't appear to be too bad. Now I told you I put a lot of glitter in the middle and y'all are probably thinking it was overkill and it might have been, 
might have been, we'll see. I don't want to seal everything down nice and snug, just like that. And then I'm going to get that to drop. I didn't quite get it sealed shut when I started doing that shaky thing. So let's get that out of the way. I won't shake it as hard this time. See if we can get it to move down. And that's what I was looking for. See how we barely see my little uh, Santa and snowman? That's what I was hoping for. Now I gotta see where this is leaking because it shouldn't be leaking anywhere. So I wanna make sure I'm getting this all connected well. Yeah, it's good now. I guess I just didn't press well before I started shaking. So there's that and he is all glittered up. I love that. And I wanna put this guy here kind of high with some sort of sentiment. I don't really know, one of the stamps or something um, from the set. Let me see, it's the same. Okay, I wanted to see if that was centered or not. But I think I wanna put that there and I'm gonna decorate up here and all that good stuff. So one thing I love about this kit is it comes with this kind of sample sheet for you to look at and you can get a lot of inspiration. And what I'm loving is how they did the twine. I'm loving how they tied these little two tags on. You know, I'm just kind of looking around. I love how they've done the different bottle caps. So I'm gonna use that as inspiration for the cover. So let me show you what I've done. I cut out a few pieces. Um, the first being a red jar lid. I think that'll be cute. And then two little tags. And I did one in glitter and one with just some of the pattern paper. I may flip this over and stamp on this side, but I feel like those are a little too similar. So we'll probably just use this side. So that's gonna be used. But also, remember I told you I wanted to use that little, um, it looks like a belly band, but it's not. It's this little band that goes all the way across. I'm going to go to the stamp set. The stamp set comes in the kit as well, which is amazing. And I'm going to use the one that says Holiday Sparkles. I think that'll be cute, especially with so many um, glitter pieces I've got on the front of this album. So right in the middle, oh, I don't know, I can't see good. Let's see if it works. If it doesn't, we can cut it again. Now these um, lines are open lines and they're thin. So what you wanna make sure you do is, well, this is an inking tip, let me just tell you. Don't twist this in the ink. Don't press and turn. When you do, you're forcing ink into all those little lines and you won't get pretty open little images like that. Kiss your ink, just kiss it on your pad and you'll get a better result. That's just a bonus tip, there you go. Okay, so now let's bring the album cover back over. The album cover, hmm, okay. So I'm thinking I want this guy somewhere, look at that, oh my goodness, that's looking cute, okay. Then I'm thinking I want, I mean, I know I want this guy up here, and then I want these little guys to hang off. Let me find some twine. So I've looked at a couple of twines. I looked at chunky twine, I looked at thin twine. I think this black it will be my best option because I think it'll wrap really well at the top, and plus it brings out the black in the ink that we used. So I think I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna cut myself a pretty good piece. I don't know how much I'm gonna need, but I'm just gonna get me a big O piece, and here's the plan. All right, I wanna pop this lid up. So I've got a little bit of foam left over from doing all that work earlier. So what I'm gonna do is put this piece at the top. Then I'm gonna wrap my twine at the bottom. And you can kind of see where these little lines are. You wanna leave yourself enough to tie. So, and I like to have a lot to tie. So I'm gonna wrap this around just as many times as this piece will go. Just think this will be cute. That may be all I can get because yeah, two times, which is plenty, which is plenty. Mm, let me level it out a little bit. Pull some that way. There we go. Now let's see if we can do it. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so now I'm gonna do is get my reverse tweezers. Here's a trick when you're working with Twan. If you use your reverse tweezers, they kind of act like an extra set of hands. So I'm just gonna slide that in there to hold that in place. And see, now I can pick up my loose ends to put my tags on and stuff like that. So let's put our tags on. I don't think I'm gonna stamp on these. I was going to. I do think I'm going to glue them so that they hang like this. You know what I'm saying? So they hang off of each other a little bit. So let's put a little glue up there. I know that will it won't be as organic, but I think it'll be cute. Let's put a little glue here and maybe even around the top for stability. Then let's just overlap these guys like so. A little bit more than that. And now I can just feed these through. So let's see. Now, if your bead threader is too thick, you can always use your dental threader. I don't know, we're gonna try the bead threader here. I 
think it's going to work. I don't have to go in very far. So let's put this one in. And then let's put this one in. Is that how I want to do it? No, I only need to put it in one. Mm -hmm. Had to think. All right. Oh, but I did put it in backwards. I do that a lot. I don't even know that I need the threader. Look, I don't. I don't to need it right here. Just pull that through. Okay. So now then, what I want to do is I'm going to release this so I can get this right where I want it. And then I'm going to tie these together on top of that. Cute. Isn't that cute? Now I'm going to do it again. And then I'm going to tie a bow. Now I kind of have these in the middle. I'm not sure I want them in the... Oh, good. They're not... Um, so I can put them where I want them. Good. Let's move the bow with it. Just going to slide that down. Just kind of switch things around a little bit. There we go. All right, let's tie the bow. I gotta be honest. Now that I have fingernails, it's much harder to do this stuff. All you ladies that have had nails all this time, y'all are rocking it because I struggle with nails. <laughs> I used to get tie a bow in two seconds. Okay, so there we go. Move that out of the way. I'm doctor this one loop a little bit. There we go. Tighten that. Then I'll place this where I want it once I get it on the jar. Isn't it cute? All right, let's flip it over, and let's add a little more foam right here underneath. I happen to have a piece already cut from what I was doing earlier, so I'm going to slide this under just like this. Cut it at the end here. Being careful not to cut my die piece under there. There we go. All right, that should be enough to hold it on. That off of there, that off of there, and to the cover. All right, let's put this on and see. This should really weight the front up. It really does. Look at that. Such a cute little set. I just think that's precious. Knowing me, I'll glue that down because I'm a person who does that. So knowing me, I'll glue that into place. But there is the lid, which I think is super cute. Let's put this guy on and I'm trying to decide if I want to pop him up. I kind of think I do, but then again, I'm not sure. I think I'll just glue him to the paper. So I think I'm going to put glue here. About that far out and then here and just let it be loose in the middle. I don't really see a reason to not. I'm trying not to cover up that little tree, but I think it's going to happen. don't think I can get it low enough or high enough to not do it. Let's get our glitter out of the way so we can see what we've got here. Look how cute. It's really cute, isn't it? I love the front of this. Yep, I'm going to glue that down because I'm that person. <laughs> Let's put a little glue here and here and stick that down just to hold it in place. Just so it can have that uh, natural look. <laughs> like it's just hanging there naturally. I love that. Okay. So there is the front of the album. Though I'll probably add more. I know when I put it together, I will add more because I'm gonna wanna put things on, like ribbon on the rings, maybe some twine. And I think I'm going to go ahead and make another chipboard piece like I did here to be the back of the album. And then I will put everything together. But here's what I'm gonna do. Because this video is getting a little long, I'm gonna stop here and let this be part one. Part two, we will do the inside of the album the back will also cover the back of this guy. We'll get this all covered and ready to go. And then uh, we'll have a completed album. So just two parts. I just don't want the video to get super, super long. And if you're wanting to catch up with me, now you can. Here's part one. I think it's turning out cute. It's different. It's fun. And um, I also think you could use this jar die for so many things. I hope you're enjoying this. I need you to do me a favor. There is so much going on in Christmas in July in May May world, okay? So much. I need you to make sure you subscribe to my channel because you're you're not going to believe how many videos are coming out every day. There's one every day at 6 p.m. just just for an example. I also need you to share with me your albums. If you make one of these with this set, I want to see it over on our customer gallery. It's like our very own Pinterest. So head over there, post your photos so we can see what you're doing. And be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Thumbs up really help in the YouTube world. So we really would appreciate it if you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for being here today. And until next time, bye now.